Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to the Imani Forrester channel. This is Shanice filling in for Imani today, the author of 30 Reasons Why Men Deserve Nothing. In this video, we're going to be diving into an issue that a lot of women deal with, but that's not really always talked about. Luckily, there are a lot of women on TikTok who are forthright about their own experiences when they realize that the person that they were dating or married to didn't like them and maybe even hated them. So a lot of these signs that they mention are subtle and easy to miss if you're in the middle of it with your rose tinted glasses on. But guys, some of these are so glaring and in your face that the red flags aren't just red. They're blood red. They're stop sign red. So, you know... Just the more videos like this that we see, the more that we can see that these XYs really aren't that slick. And most of the times, they can't even hide their true feelings about their significant others because they will always tell on themselves by their behavior. The goal of this is to really be able to recognize the patterns and familiarize ourselves with these red flags and detect them early on so that women can protect ourselves in future relationships if we choose to engage in them and make sure that we only engage in relationships that are fulfilling to us and that serve us. So I'm going to get into this series of TikToks, then I'm going to come back on the back end with my own commentary. There's a video on here where a creator is explaining the easiest way to tell if your man hates you is if he ruins your birthday. And that video triggered me because it's it's true. Like, with my ex-husband, every year, without fail, on my birthday, he would find a reason to argue with me. Like, I've had so many birthdays with him to where I just, I just spent the day in bed just feeling shattered, crying, just feeling, like, feeling shitty about myself. And there was this one year before we broke up, <clears throat> I wanted to see if he was really don't, if he was really ruining my birthday on purpose, because I was just thinking, like, I actually, like, told him, I was like, I feel like every year <laughs> something happens on my birthday. Because I'm like, because it's just like, why? Why? Why is it a coincidence? And so that was before my birthday. So my birthday comes around. We had these plans. Everything was set in motion. And so we get in the car the day of my birthday we start pulling out the garage and lo and behold lo and behold we didn't even pull out the parking lot yet he starts arguing with me and i just remember it was something very petty and i really wasn't trying to like feed into the argument and the guy starts punching on stuff in the car he explodes and all i remember is that the the argument was something petty it wasn't even anything big, but his actions were crazy as if something major had happened. But then that solidified my suspicions that he was indeed messing my birthday up on purpose. He was doing it on purpose. And <clears throat> for that creator to say, you know, that's a way to tell that your man hates you. I can't believe it. Like, I can't believe it. Like, why i just never understood why he would hate me you know it's like why <laughs> let's talk about the when your boyfriend starts to hate you trend i've been seeing on here lately if you've ever been in a long-term relationship you may have experienced the feeling when you sense that your boyfriend just hates you or maybe you start hating your boyfriend. And yes, of course relationships change over time, but I swear it's the little things that matter the most. It's all in the fine details because I have been in this position myself where I have overstayed a long-term relationship way past its expiration date. So I can quickly sense it in other couples and it's usually a ticking time bomb. It's like the kiss of death. The honeymoon phase is gone and then you realize you guys aren't even friends. It's like you both just start to get on each other for the littlest things. And you're usually only still together because it's easier than just breaking up. 
I saw one girl on here talk about her experience and I can't remember the original creator, I'm so sorry, but she said she knew that it was over when her boyfriend stopped letting her put her cold toes on him. And it is always those little, little details. You stop cuddling on the couch. You argue about what to watch on TV. You might stop sleeping together or it turns into more of like a chore. And you both know exactly what to do or say to get under that person's skin. Long-term relationships are rarely as happy as you think because most couples never experience just being friends first. So they have have no idea what to expect once the love and passion fades and that is like a make or break partner relationship because most people are together for the wrong reasons they just don't know it like you're dating someone because they make you feel good or because you make them feel good but on paper do you guys make sense being together do you have things in common do you have shared interests besides just being attracted to each other these couples will realize they have nothing in common so there's no solid foundation to fall back on and then they are stuck just wasting each other's time meanwhile one of them or even both of them have already emotionally checked out of their relationship and usually this stage is where cheating is more likely to happen if you don't break up or you don't communicate exactly what's going on and try to fix it. So if you're at the point in your relationship where you're sensing that things are dead or they're feeling hopeless and there's no love there anymore, you need to be honest with yourself. Is it fixable? Do you even want to fix it? I think a lot of times it's easier to just start over with someone new, especially if you are lucky enough to not be tied to this person through marriage or having kids together. Consider yourself lucky if you aren't tied to someone with those type of things and you're feeling this way. If it feels like nothing you guys are doing is making it work, get out as early as possible because the longer you are together, the harder it's gonna be to break up eventually. And no, progressing the relationship to the next level, whatever that may be, is not going to fix things. It will only make things worse, trust me. Y'all gotta stop lying to yourselves because you are breaking your own heart. This comment really triggered me because one time I was seeing this guy and he used to always like bring me food. We either used to go out to eat or he would bring food to my house. It got to a point where he was bringing like kitchen appliances to my home. I don't really cook and would make food for me and like alcoholic beverages and like stuff like that. And he was really nice. Like I was into him. It was great. It was a great time. But one day. I jokingly was like, why do you bring all these food? Oh my God, I'm gonna start gaining weight. And he was like, that's the plan. And I was like, ha ha ha, what? And he said, I'm trying to fatten you up so no other guy will look at you. That was the last date we had. If a man is critical, he's insecure. If he tries to make you feel dumb, he feels dumb. If he puts you down about your weight, he feels bad about his weight or he's scared he's going to be judged about his appearance. Whatever he's trying to make you feel insecure about, that is the very thing he feels the most insecure about. And he's afraid to death of being found out about. He's trying to make sure you are always feeling just a little bit less than him. You want to find a great man who treats you really well. Find a man who lifts you up. Find a man who always believes in you. Find a man who's loving to you no matter what. Enjoy the man who laughs with you, not at you, forever at your expense. See, there's one thing I can tell you for sure is that a man who loves you will always make you feel good. Now, is he imperfect? Is he going to make mistakes? Of course he is. But if you bring those mistakes to his attention, they will break his heart and he will hurt because he's hurt you and he will never intentionally hurt you again, ever, period. When this man tried to downplay my motherfucking master's degree, that should turn me off all the fucking way he was talking about something and i had said something about while well, i'm talking to you why oh you he said oh i'm surprised you can spell i said well damn don't drop dead fred when you find out i can get my fucking masters he said oh they must be giving it out to anybody i said if they give it out to anybody then why don't you have one yet <laughs> he said oh i can't afford that i can't afford that i'm not like you i can't afford that i said well clearly they're not giving it to any and every fucking body because it's not in everybody's tax bracket, correct? It's from what you're saying. Like, I don't know about y'all, but playing with my motherfucking achievements, 
making it seem like what I'm achieving is fucking easy and everybody can fucking do it. No, I do not think everybody can get their master's in fucking biology. No, I do not think a lot of people know how to name and fucking draw amino acids. So I'm sorry if that's something I'm not going to let you fucking play with me about. So the last thing I'm going to let anybody do is play me about a motherfucking degree that you bitches couldn't even possibly spell. Okay? Okay. Just saying. If a man refuses to compliment you, he hates you. But he hates you because he knows that you can do better than him. A man that believes you're out of his league will try to humble you. And I'm talking about men that go out of their way to not compliment you. Like you've been on several dates with this guy, has never mentioned anything about your outfit, your makeup, never once called you beautiful. Maybe you're also sending pictures to him and he'll comment on anything other than your beauty. Yeah, that man is insecure and he will stop at nothing until you feel insecure. Do not entertain men who don't make you feel beautiful. I found out that the boy that I was talking to hated my existence. Just like anybody else, there was the honeymoon phase. Of course, everything was good, everything was nice. And then the two to three week mark came. First of all, he will always bail on our plans. And when he bails on our plans, he would tell me at the lastest minute possible. Yes, I said last test. I need you people to understand. I'm already fully dressed, makeup done, hair done, looking nice, smelling good. And I'll get a call. I don't even get a call. I'm tripping. I have to reach out at the last second like, hey, like, what time are you going to be on the way? And then this is his response. Oh, we're not going no more. Oh, that's dead. You need to die. You're dead. Now, when he cancels, he doesn't try to make it up. Or even tell me the reason why he cancelled. Number two, he never really initiated anything. And even if he initiates something, it will probably to come to his house. Which is, there's no problem with it, but... Like, sometimes when he bails on me, I'm like, okay, you know what? I can come over and we can just chill, you know? Or some chill ish. Like, I don't require too much. Now that I think about it, maybe that was the plan. Because he don't want to spend money outside when he take me out. Yay. Another reason why I knew that he hated me is because he never really celebrated my successes for real, for real. Now, you might be wondering, why didn't I leave? I will tell you exactly why. I want to tell you guys, this man was my type to the T. I'm talking to the T. My type. So he was honestly just giving eye candy. You know what I mean? Which is shallow, yes, I understand. But like the first few weeks we started talking, he was not acting like this at all. Let me tell you guys how we started. The first few weeks, I was his lock screen. We were going to sleep on the phone. Everything. I was love bomb. Oh, bomb me, but one light that will bomb me. Oh, bomb me. Like this man became cold hearted. And I know some of you in the comments are probably going to be like, oh, but why did you leave from the beginning? Yo, he was never like that. Now, I'm not going to act like a saint. When he did piss me off and cancel our plans, I definitely made plans with somebody else the next day, and I did not care. Because the canceling thing was back to back to back. Every single weekend, he would cancel on me. I couldn't take it anymore. And then we ended up getting into an argument one day, and he really opened his mouth to verbally tell me that he hates me. And then I was like, I knew it. Yeah, guys, that's really how I found out that the boy I was talking to hated me. I feel like I left out some more detail, but like, Maybe when I find my journal, I'll be able to tell the story for Bali. But I was just like, let me just give you people a little bit of tea. If you want to see more of this, go ahead and follow me. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not sure if anybody else has experienced this, but I'm going to talk about it. And if you have, leave a comment. And I'm basically just going to talk about the moment that I realized that my now ex-husband, um didn't doesn't love me didn't love me so throughout the whole course of our two and a half year relationship and two year marriage um i like i'm just a very affectionate person i always have been um like yeah that's just who i am and i know now that i just i love very deeply um and like it really didn't matter who it was i would have treated them that way anyways because I would have loved them well anyways so for the entirety of our relationship I was very affectionate with my words and like actions so I just remember like when I would tell my ex why I loved him or how much I loved him I would like I would talk about like the things about him that I loved you know what I mean so like instead of 
um, I love your smile or I love your personality. It would be like, I love this specific thing about like the specific thing that you do and here's why I love it and et cetera, et cetera. So like I was, I was just always really good at that. Like using my words to express like my feelings or my love for other people. And for a long time, I just thought that like he wasn't, you know what I mean? Like he didn't, um, I'm saying, you know what I mean a lot. I'll try to stop. But anyways, he wasn't very affectionate with like his words. Um, he did do a lot of acts of service, I guess you can say. Um, and then I guess that's how I justified in my head why I wasn't receiving the um, vocal affirmations that I was wanting. And I remember like kind of towards the end of our marriage that I asked him actually, I was like, what do you love about me? Because whenever like we would get into a fight, he would do this thing as a lot of toxic people do instead of like apologizing to you face to face and then acknowledging what they did and why they're not gonna do it again and the steps they're going to take to ensure that. He would um, instead write me little like handwritten letters or just like text messages. And in it, he, it would basically say like the same like few things every single time. And I kind of caught that pattern because there were too many notes. And it was always along the lines of like, I love how much you love me. I love how you take care of me. I love, and it was basically just like a list of things that I was doing that he loved. So it wasn't like necessarily me. He never like complimented things about like my essence, my soul, my vibe, the things that I'm passionate about. And like, I just remember thinking that one day, I'm like, wow, like I shower you with affection and affirmations you only are able to write them to me what's up uh, i want my knee oh dang it you're cute <laughs> and he wouldn't even do that the way that i wanted so after about like two years of that behavior um when i sat down and i questioned i was like do you like love anything about me like can you tell me things about me that you love not things that i do for you um and he couldn't even answer that and i just remember like feeling so defeated because i'm like wow he doesn't even really know me like he doesn't he doesn't love the things about me that i would love about me you know he loves he loves the things that I do for him, which is classic narcissistic behavior. They have to hold on to you because they know that no one else is going to treat them as good as you do because you are the embodiment of love. That, like it was that's such a common thing that I hear from like my exes is they like when they would compare me to their exes, they would just tell me how much how much they loved, how I was so much more affectionate than their other partner and i used to think it was just because like you know back in my not so very girl girl girls girl days i used to think it was just because you know they were bitches and mean and like didn't know how to show love and etc cetera, etc cetera. and i know now maybe that wasn't the case but it's just like i just want someone to love me the way that i do and i realized that he was never going to be able to do that so yeah, I think it was like just after that moment I had that realization and um, probably wasn't like very soon after when shit really hit the fan and we ended up apart. There's a video going around of a woman saying that one of the ways to tell that your uh, boyfriend or husband hates you is to see how he acts on your birthday. And uh, I, I saw a creator that just said that she saw that and it triggered her and it, like, you know, I've been triggered. I've been triggered. <laughs> um, and, and, and this is why I was with this guy for four years and he would always, uh, have just really big emotions and not, I guess, know how to handle his really big emotions like anger. That's an emotion. Also an inability to name his emotions. 
instead of naming emotions, for example, you would say, um, I'm mad and it's, it's your fault. So I internalized that a lot as it continued to build up over four years. Like it did not happen overnight. So if you're watching this and you're thinking, my relationship is great. Like, I hope it is. And I bet it, like, I, I bet it is great. And, and also like still pay attention to some signs. I, I wish that I had, <laughs> I wish that I had. <laughs> so the story for it to get into it, it was coming around to my birthday. He was like, what do you want for your birthday? I was like, I just really want to be around trees for my birthday. And I really want this bike, this really specific bike. And if you want to help me pay for this bike, that would be really cool. Like, you don't have to, but like, that would be really cool. I just want to spend time with you and be around trees. And in no uncertain words, he was like, that's a stupid idea. <laughs> He was like, how about instead we go to a winery in Napa? And so now it requires some context because he previously, like months previously, he asked me if I wanted to go to Napa with him the following day for wine tasting. I was like, yeah, that sounds like a really cute plan. Amazing. And then it became a really intense fight on the way there. And then he was trying to tell me something that I did that was, I, I guess, my fault. And then him saying... Um, I wanted to remember my uncle that had passed away. I wanted to remember him by going to Napa. And he was like, if I'm ever going to Napa and you're coming with me, it's never about you or us. It's always going to be about him. So like, okay, I get it. And I can make space for that. That's, that's fine. Like, it was like, okay, good to know. I would have loved to understand what it meant to you before you invited me to go to Napa with you for wine tasting, thinking it was just going to be a cute thing for us. But like, it's okay. Like, amazing. Like, note it. In the future, it will be about your uncle. So the time comes around and he says uh, to me around my birthday, he's like, how about we go to Napa for your birthday? And I was like, I was like, well, is, is, is that for you or is that for me? And he was like offended. He was like, of course it's for you. So I was like, and, and, and he was like, a, a vineyard is trees. So like, it, it, it's still trees. And I was like, okay, like, for the sake of not arguing and just like giving the man what he wanted, it was like, okay, fine, let's go to fucking Napa and go wine tasting for my birthday. You're trying to do something cute. Okay, let's make it a cute thing. So he books out this hotel that's like $700 a night, which is insane. And if you know me at all, you know that I don't really like that, need that. It's like, I'm, I'm not going to pay for it, really. Like, again, I wanted to be around trees for my birthday. That was literally it. <laughs> like, so he's like, okay, Napa. And this room, that's $700. And because it's so expensive, they have complimentary wine at all times amazing and he booked us this wine tasting for when we when we would arrive so now it's morning before my birthday we get up we're on our way to the winery and somehow we get into a fight on our way there and he's quiet the whole way there and then we pull in and he's like acting mad at me or aggravated I don't like none of it really makes sense because it wasn't really a fight he just started being pissy I guess and uh, we kind of like raced to the first winery and we didn't eat anything. So now we were like racing into the winery with having not eaten anything to do like four different wine rooms back to back. The first one was cute. The first one was a good time. Our hostess was amazing. She and I like low key became friends pretty quickly we were like, we're going to make plans to go see this play together and it's going to be great. Um, and so she, she was awesome and it was fun to talk to her. And then we went to the second wine room and we had wine and it was, it was fine. But again, like neither of us had eaten. And then the third wine room comes around, we drink wine. And then he goes to my car. I, I insisted on driving to Napa. It was like a two hour drive from where we lived. Because, like, I got a new car and I wanted to ride my to drive my new car. And so he goes back to my car and he knows that I don't like it when he, like, rolls, like, the green leaf. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that word on TikTok or not. 
in my car and he, and and I don't really know this like he he's just like I'm I'm going back uh, to your car for a quick smoke I'll be back soon and we'll go to the next wine room wine room together so I was like okay and I waited for him for a long time and eventually when he did come back he showed up walking up the walkway with like his hand dripping in blood because while he was there uh, at my car, he, he had grabbed a complimentary glass of wine on his way that he was drinking while smoking. And apparently he'd, he had picked it up so hard that it shattered in his hand. And now his hand was cut up from glass. And he just like rolled around and he's like, okay, let's go. And he's still dripping. And just like, okay, we need to clean you up. And I try to clean him up there on the patio. And he was just like, he was drunk and he was just not cooperating. And he even alarmed the people that worked there at that winery. And so they came out to like, like with a first aid kit, they're like, are you okay? What can we do? He literally smacked one bandaid on it. And then he just like took off and he was like, let's go. And then I just like with my bottle of water, try to rinse off, you know, the drops from the patio where people eat and I'm just trying to not fight with him right and so we rock up to the last wine room and we're seated and uh, the guy comes the, the host comes around and he notices my ex and he was like yo are you okay and he was like yeah I'm fine and then he leaves and then I'm like actually like why don't you go like pop into the bathroom go like rinse off like clean yourself up a bit and he was like, what? Do you have a problem with brown people's blood? I don't know. I just don't know. Um, and I was like, no, it's just not, it's not sanitary. Uh, and, and he was like, what do you know about sanitary? He was just challenging me on everything and wouldn't go wash his hand. <laughs> and uh, we, and so I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm just going to try to have a good time. And we finish up. We go back to my car. He didn't plan anything for dinner, of course. And I'm like, okay, I'm drunk. I'm starting to feel sick. Like, neither of us had eaten. Um, so we're like, let's go back to my car and I'll figure out where, like, where, where I want to go for dinner. I was craving pasta. And we'll, you know, get dinner and make a reservation for dinner that I did. <laughs> and I get back to my car and I kid you not, it was like the whole side of my car just covered in, 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 in his... Can, can I say blood on this? Anyway, it was covered. It was covered in it. And uh, I was just like trying to not freak out. And I was being calm and collected because he was drunk. And uh, long story short, we got into a massive fight over nothing that night where he ended up telling me what he really thought about me and ended up, ended up telling me that if I didn't like that, telling me that I was going to marry him and when we and, and when I got married to him I was going to change my last name to his last name and I was like we've talked about this I have a PhD I've worked hard for it I'm not going to I'm, I'm I, like I, I'm not going to change my name and he was like okay then we're not gonna we're not getting married because like I'll never believe that you actually have any skin in the game and I'll never trust you and I was like okay I guess we're not gonna get married then um and then the next and, and then just the whole fight that night was pretty awful and it ended uh the following day the relationship ended the following day after fighting all night um he was a proper ass that night and then I tried to drive us home the next day and it got really dangerous and and I was just completely done by that point he called me an effing c word he called me a dumb b word like no we were long, long, long done by then. And since then, it's just been no contact. It's like, no. Stop normalizing your husband hating you. Stop it. Um, I see a handful of videos every single day of women on this app and the other being silly, being goofy, being themselves, and their husbands having just fucking disdain for them and it's visible I can see it you can see it she can see it and it's just this like ha 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 my husband finds me so annoying no 
No. If my husband is not obsessed with me 99% of the time, I won't have him. Your spouse should not openly dislike your personality. They should not openly be annoyed by you. Like, yes, am I annoyed by my husband sometimes? Sure. But 99% of the time, I look at that man like he is the most prized possession in the world. And I 1,000% expect him to look at me the same way. If you ever catch my husband on camera looking at me the way some of these husbands look at their wives, divorce. Divorce immediately. Stop normalizing your husband openly hating you. He's nonchalant because he doesn't actually like you. He leaves you undelivered because he doesn't actually like you. There's a girl on his phone who never has to text him first. And he finally texts you when she doesn't text him back. He knows how you deserve to be treated and he'd be doing it if he actually wanted you. He knows how to communicate consistently and he'd be doing it if he wanted to talk to you. He's not taking you out on dates because he's already getting all the access he wants so he feels no incentive to. And he's not coming back because he misses you. It's because he knows he'll still have access. And by the way, he'll keep losing respect for you. My love, this is your sign to move on from this man. Save this and listen on repeat. I love you and you deserve better. How he treats you on your birthday is how he feels about you. Okay, let's get into it. Hi, my name's Gina DeBellis. I'm a retired sergeant from the New York City Police Department. I did 27 years in the police department. I've worked with thousands and thousands of men, and I've interviewed hundreds of more for a book that I'm writing and a website that I'm building. So when it comes to guys, I know what I'm talking about. So let's talk about your birthday and how it shows you how he really feels about you. So the your birthday is that one day a year that's all about you. Um, it's kind of like if you're a mom and it's Mother's Day, it's the same thing Mother's Day is all about, you know, your mom. So your birthday is your special day. It's all about you. And it's his chance and his opportunity to really do something special for you and something nice for you. Now, the guys that I've worked with, the ones that do really nice things for their wives on their birthday, I have to say these guys are great partners. They don't cheat on their wives. They do things around the house. They're always talking about going on vacation with their family and with their, you know, with their girlfriends. And they're thoughtful. They call them. They're really good partners, but the guys that don't do anything for their wives, like nothing special for their birthday or their girlfriends, nothing special for their birthday, they're nobody I would want to have a relationship with. They are inconsiderate and they're selfish and they're, they're just not people you'd want to be in a relationship with. So when you're with your boyfriend and it's your birthday and he has nothing planned and there's no flowers at your house or there's no you know he's not showing up with a bouquet or with a beautiful gift you're not the girl for him the girl for him is the girl that he's planning the party for the girl he's throwing you know he's buying balloons for the girl that he's gonna do something grand like that grand gesture that is the girl that's the girl for him if you're the girl just getting like hey happy birthday here's a card and a box of candy or hey happy birthday you know i got you a necklace and you could tell it's like a shitty kind of necklace or something like that let me tell you something you're not the girl for him you're the placeholder while he waits for the girl he's gonna plan the party for the girl he plans the party for the girl he goes above and beyond for the girl he makes feel special on her birthday on her special day that is the girl and that is the relationship he wants. So just remember how a guy treats you on your birthday is an overall indication of how your relationship is with him, how your life will be with him, how like that is like you are looking at like a picture of your life. So if he kind of doesn't go above and beyond for your birthday, he's never going to go above and beyond for you. If he's not doing something special for you, if he's not planning a party for you, if you are not the girl he is doing everything for, you are not the girl for him. So just remember, how he treats you on your birthday is a real indicator on how important you are to him. 
And it's also your birthday is going to be a preview of what your life would be like with him. So just keep that in mind. Use your birthday as an indicator. Um, take care. If you have any questions, please reach out and contact. Happy dating and talk to you soon. Bye-bye. How he treats you on your birthday is how he feels about you. I could not run fast enough to stitch this video. I don't know who needs to hear this, but if your partner does not treat your birthday like it is the most important day in the world, that is not it. Even if you are someone who hates birthdays, your partner should treat your birthday, in my personal opinion, like it is the best day in the world because you were born. And of course, because they should feel so lucky to be dating you and why not celebrate the day that you were born? Because if you weren't born, you wouldn't be together. So if you are dating someone that like doesn't celebrate your birthday, forget your birthday, just get you a card with nothing else. Mm, no, 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 we don't do that besties. And I'm not saying they have to go out and spend a ton of money because there are absolutely ways to make your day feel so special without going out and doing these elaborate things. But if they do not treat your birthday like a national holiday, no, besties, dump them. We don't have time for that. When I tell you that my fiance and I have been together for two years and the two birthdays that we've spent together, our birthdays are actually 10 days apart. He has made this day like the most magical day. And I'm gonna show you some inserts. This is the cake that my fiance made for me for my birthday last year. And my fiance is not a baker. I'm a baker. I love, it's a hobby of mine. If you look through some of my videos, I show fancy cakes. This man fucking made me an entire cheesecake. Look at how freaking impressive that is, ladies. If you wanted to, he would. Oh, and he made a practice cheesecake before the real cheesecake because he didn't want to mess it up. I also waitress at night in the city and uh, the night before my birthday, my fiance stayed up until 2.30 in the morning. I told him I was going out with some friends to have a drink and he wanted to be the first person to wish me happy birthday. So this man stayed up until I got home from work. Granted, he was sleeping on the couch, but when I got in the door, he like jumped up to sing me happy birthday at 2.30 in the morning. We go to bed at like 10 o'clock, had this whole table, flowers, balloons, everything. And this was just that. We had, he had a whole day planned for me. So just your friendly reminder, if he wanted to, he would. And if he doesn't treat your birthday like a national holiday, ain't nobody got time for that. If you are out walking somewhere with your man and he routinely doesn't wait for you, doesn't slow down and always walks ahead of you, I can tell you from experience, that man hates your guts. Men are naturally just wired to be protectors, right? Well, I mean, they used to be. They all want princess treatment now. Anyway, so if he's quite happy to just pay you no mind and leave you in his dust every time you're out together, it says a lot. It says that he doesn't really care about your whereabouts, doesn't care about your safety. He's just not thinking about you or where you're at or if you even made it across the street alive. He don't give a ross. <laughs> and I mean, if he sees you struggling to keep up and he just carries on doing up track star anyway, listen. <laughs> He wants you dead. Yeah. If your man has zero natural inclination to protect you and to look out for you just on a day to day, it's not looking good, bruv. I know it probably sounds kind of extreme to link the two things together, but honestly, what I have learned, when a guy doesn't really care, he doesn't really like you that much, it will trickle down to so many different areas, even subconsciously. I mean, you probably wouldn't think where a guy chooses to walk could be an indicator of how he feels about you, but it really is. I used to date this guy who would always speed ahead and just leave me walking by myself. Tell me it was because I was too slow and I just needed to keep up. But when we would go out with his friend's girlfriends, he would happily hang back and walk with the girls who were struggling in their heels. He just did not rate me <laughs> at all. Oh, also him walking ahead of you all the time, it actually could mean that he's embarrassed to be seen with you in public. So he's trying to walk as far away from you as possible. So yeah. There's also that. Anyway, girl, let me know if the guy's ever done this to you or if you even knew it was a thing. And I'll call you back soon for some more girl chat. So I had a friend whose boyfriend literally hated her and for some reason she did not know. But I knew it before she did and here's how. So one night we went to the club and I remember after the club was over, he was already, he was, he, he had a section all the way on the other side of the club with his friends and we had our own section. So we were like kind of on the opposite ends of the club, you know, no, no biggie, but he was all right there. So at the end of the club, we're leaving and she's texting him, but I can see him from a distance, get in his car and pull off. Me and him make eye contact.
So we're texting him like, hey, where did you go? He said, hey, yeah, call an Uber. Um, I have to make a business run real fast. Didn't say, hey, babe, I'm doing this. Didn't do any of that. And right there, then I knew. I said, he does not like you. She didn't believe me, stayed. And guess what happened? He moved a girl in on her. A man who makes your life harder than it was before he walked into it probably hates you. There are no masculine men out there who want to make the lives of the women that they love harder than it needs to be. If he's abusive and talking down on you, he probably hates you. If he's a financial burden and plays video games all day. Okay, so I told y'all I'd be back on the back end. Thanks for sticking around. I know that that was like a lot of videos. In this part of the video, I just wanted to kind of go through a few things that I noticed. And so I'll start with um, the birthday sign, if he ruins your birthday. And I want to start with this one because it was by far the most prevalent in these videos, these TikToks that we stitched. There's like about five of them and they could have actually been their own video. Yeah, your birthday is supposed to be about you and your partner should be just as excited as you are for it because it was the day that you were born, right? So if he really doesn't want to honor your plans any at all, if he's calling your plans dumb or he's making the occasion about him and what he wants to do, red flag. He has his own days for this. And I'm sure that his partner in all those cases isn't making the, the day about themselves, you know? Um, and worse, if he's creating chaos around your birthday, starting fights on purpose because he knows that that day is supposed to be about you, kick him to the curb. So many stories mentioned this, like just way too many times. It's far and away the most common sign in this video. And that doesn't just limit itself to birthdays, guys. It's also any occasion that centers you. So don't count out Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, special occasions that might maybe you were just looking forward to. These are all opportunities for him to show how much he appreciates you. And if he's taking it as his chance to just make your day worse, easy tell that he doesn't like you. Because once again, making one like someone's day special or like a little bit easier or making them feel appreciated that day, it doesn't require a whole lot of work, monetarily or otherwise. So the fact that he's putting an effort to ruin that day for you, that should be a major sign. Um, I personally would also love to see women matching that energy because these dudes are in F around find out season. And if they're effing around like this, I'd love to see their birthdays and holidays ruined. But I'm just toxic like that. It's like, if he messes up your special occasions and birthdays and, you know, this, that, the third, I would love to see his effed up. F his up. Show him the same energy. Maybe then he'll stop. But anyway, look, I'm just toxic like that. I'm going to move on to the next one. Don't follow my, my words as advice. I'm just a believer in matching energy. So anyway... The next point here I have is, oh, it was in the video where the woman has said that her partner uh, kept bringing her what I'm sure is unhealthy food and joked that his plan was to have her gain weight so that no other man would look at her. And look, we all know that these XY's jokes always reveal the truth in them. And it, it just comes like this is the pattern, like the more that they know that they're not deserving of you or the more insecure that they feel. And these are all feelings that they can have. He believes this stuff. He believes this. And the more that they believe this, the more that they will attempt to do things that they believe will bring you down to their level. And so that's their motivation when they when they try to sabotage you in any sort of way. This is also their uh, motivation when they try to roast, criticize, neg, humble you. When they roast and, and try to play it off as a joke. Like, pre please promptly tell him that you're not the audience for that joke. And I would suggest to promptly leave him alone as well. Refusing to compliment you also kind of, I feel, belongs somewhere in this sphere because it's not just the active put downs, but it's also withholding any kind of compliment, knowing that like you put a lot of effort into maybe how you put yourself together and just not saying anything. You send him a picture. He has nothing to say about your beauty or anything like that. Um, saying anything, but you know, things that he he knows would make you feel good about yourself yeah these are these are dudes who are highly insecure and you don't don't want to be with an insecure guy who thinks that he doesn't deserve you because he will find a way to try to drag you down to that it's like okay now now you're low enough that you're on my level he will try to drag you down to his level he won't try to rise up to yours he'll try to drag you down to his 
So um, be careful. This even bleeds into sabotaging your goals, whether they be educational, career goals, personal accomplishments as well. Trying to sabotage you, not just for your, not just sabotage your looks, but trying to sabotage your efforts as well bleeds into him not feeling deserving. So it's like if he sees you striving for more, it's like, again, you are putting yourself outside of his reach again. So he has to drag you down. So that's also a major sign as well. And that leads into my next point, the downplaying or sabotaging of achievements. It just shows that you're not dealing with somebody who sees themselves as your partner, but somebody who sees you as competition, even if you're not competing with them. And if your accomplishments are met with downplaying or jealousy, it's a huge sign that he's highly insecure on his part. Whether he fails to celebrate your successes or says, well, anyone could have done that. If what you've achieved, he doesn't acknowledge the passion, the dedication, hard work, work ethic that you put in to meet that goal, he's completely threatened by you. And a guy like that is just way too insecure. It's like those types of dudes are like the bane of the existence of like women who are on their grind and trying to achieve in this life. Those types of men, they know that obviously something about them is inadequate. And if he thinks that you moving up means that he's closer to losing you, then he he needs to lose you then. He probably should lose you. And you shouldn't, you shouldn't be with him. <laughs> but I can, I can only imagine, like, in those kinds of relationships, if you aspire to more, that disdain will only just grow. And, um, it could probably turn to sabotage and worse. So you don't, you really don't need someone who's so pathetic that they feel like you shining your light and shining bright is, you know, gonna make them feel dim. Like, that person does not need to be in your life. Just leave them alone. Number four is uh, bailing on plans. Yeah, so when your partner bails on plans, like last minute, like in one of the videos, after the XY knows that you've spent a lot of time to get ready, um, huge red flag, because they know that you put a lot of effort into getting dressed up. For some people, like personally, I'm more introverted. It also takes me being in a specific headspace to even want to go out. So people springing plans up on you and then saying, oh, we're not doing that anymore. That is particularly bothersome to me. Basically, this person is showing that they don't care. You probably know from the beginning of that day whether or not, like, mm, I'm going somewhere or not. Like, if this person waits for you to call them to tell you, ah, I, I changed my mind or, you know, we're not doing that anymore, they're basically showing that they don't care about your time or feelings. And it's just disrespectful. And they're testing your boundaries to see what they can get away with. And this kind of game playing is a really bad sign. If they were really into you, they'd be more worried about losing you than playing these kinds of disrespectful games. Personally, I'd hesitate to even want to be in a relationship with somebody who is going to test you in that way. Because sadly, a lot of guys will do this kind of stuff. Like, it doesn't necessarily have to be this specifically, but they will try to see where they can test your boundaries and if you'll accept it or not. And I'm glad that the girl in the video kind of got out pretty early, like a few weeks in isn't too late. You know, that's not too bad. But or just know that them playing games like that kind of signifies that they're not afraid to, you know, play these games and lose. And in, in, in that case, it's lose you. And it's sad, but I really wouldn't believe that that person truly values you if they're willing to just, you know, play one game and, and ruin it all you know, like that. So red flag, but use your own discernment. Um, cooling down was another one. In the beginning of a relationship, he might be running and chasing after you. Great communication between you two, maybe even love bombing, which is actually a red flag. But it could be misread as like, oh, he's just really into me. And then, you know, once he gets you, he might be like, well, I don't have to keep this up anymore. But that just goes to show that he was really putting on. He might just enjoy the chase. And then afterwards, it's like he doesn't care anymore, which means that he didn't really care about you. And it also shows that he was being fake. He was putting it on. He, it was like a false persona. And somebody, somebody definitely can't fake it forever so eventually he has to be himself and that when the true self comes out it's like it was this person that 
that didn't like you in the first place. He was pretending to be somebody who was really in love with you, but he, he wasn't. Um, and even within a relationship, the subtle things like not wanting to cuddle all of a sudden or, you know, little things suddenly drive them up a wall. Of course, in a relationship, you are going to test each other's nerves sometimes and stuff like that. And we all know that there's a honeymoon phase in all relationships. And then after that, things reach a sort of equilibrium or a state of normal. Um, but that state of normal shouldn't be like a complete distancing or like a just complete like cold temperament towards you. And it's like what was said within um, the TikTok. If you have nothing in common with your partner and like no other glue binding you besides like that initial burst of passion in the beginning of the relationship, it's quite likely that you might not have enough in common to actually warrant like having a relationship that's long term with that person. Um, things will eventually fall apart if you can't find anything else to um, to hold you two together. And again, that leads to him having to like you as a person and not just, you know, as a potential, you know, a bed um partner for you right so um yeah don't overstay within those relationships i agree completely with that tiktok and um and go go for somebody who really likes you enjoys you and your personality um my my second to last one was him loving uh, what you can do for him, but not you. And it's a huge sign of narcissism or narciss narcissistic traits when guys value or like somebody values what you can do for them over who you are. Um, they're in it for the utility. This has been actually on our channel countless times. I believe we've covered like how males will value utility of a woman and not necessarily the woman herself. So you do have to ask yourself, does he care about me? Does he love me or just what I'm providing? Um, because men will get into or stay in relationships because they value what a woman can do for them and not the person herself. And it's akin to seeing you like an appliance, like, you know, like a Keurig versus, you know, some other brand that does the same thing. It's like, if you only value the coffee that's made, it doesn't really matter what other traits the coffee makers have. They're interchangeable. And it's really sad, but I feel like these questions do need to come up very early in the relationship so that, like, you know what he's in it for and so that you can be aware if you're just a placeholder for him. Like, are you actually his ideal type? Are you actually... Does he actually have things in common with you? Like... You know, because this is a this is a major red flag. It just means that you can be switched out with anyone and shows that this this X, Y doesn't care about you specifically. And lastly, contempt for your fun. For that one. That one hit hard. It's like if you're not molding yourself to a personality that he approves of. Which is probably being docile and quiet and doing whatever he wants, you know, or you know, whatever he wants you to do, um, when you're being like free and jokey and goofy and full of yourself. And he, um, instead he gives you a contempt filled gaze, huge sign. He doesn't like you. Um, he's not seeing you outside of what he wants and what he needs you to be for himself. And so you operating outside of that framework probably pisses him off. If he truly liked you, he'd, like, appreciate your energy, your free spirit. He'd be cheering you on. He'd not want to, like, squash you down. Um, and the right person doesn't need to you to shrink yourself to fit into their expectations. So you deserve somebody who treasures every bit of who you are, quirks, eccentricities, and all. And, you know, you shouldn't have to put on an act or dim your light or second-guess yourself every move you make just to keep him happy. Th that just means that he doesn't like who you are, you know. Um, that's one of the clearest signs. 
Oh, sorry. And I have one, I have actually one last one. My bad. When a partner consistently wants to like avoid being seen with you in public, such as walking really far ahead of you or appearing embarrassed by your presence or not wanting to sit near you or across from you beside you or anything like that in public, um, that behavior just shows that, um, like it shows a lack of respect and pride in you and your relationship with each other. So those, that's what I got from, uh, these videos. Um, let me know what you guys think in the comments section. I know this was a long one and thanks for, um, for spending the time with me, um, in this video. But yeah, as my final thoughts, ladies, don't, don't overstay in relationships that don't serve you. If this person wouldn't even be your friend, if you weren't dating, then it's probably time to get the F out. Don't waste your time trying to make it work with somebody who's not willing to, um, to put in the effort for you. So that's the end of that video, um, of this video. Please, uh, remember to like the video if it, if it was helpful to you. Um, subscribe to the channel if you want to hear more videos like this. And, um, share it with anyone who you feel that this would help. And thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.